Welcome to the Sketch Zone podcast. Jack Casper, Jack. Hello, my friend. Hey, I'm Jack. I'm back. I'm the intro stealer. I'm the punches dealer because time is ain't here. <laughs> <laughs> I usually get job leads too, but it usually has something to do with a weed whacker or some dishes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Microsoft Excel. Excel? Did she say she did yeah. something? She, she said Excel. We, we, we were busting on Pinchot Pro last week in Windsor, so we got Excel. We got Excel to the actual yeah. market. So we got it's a quick. What other kind of software do you use? Quicken. <laughs> Charlie <laughs> said Quicken? <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing you have to say. I'm literally asking you for it. You know what, Charlie? You're over there. You're emotional. That's what it is. You're emotional. You can't hear me talk because you're emotional. You can't hear me. I'll let you be wrong. I don't mind. I'm nice like that. I'm nice like that, Charlie. Okay. You all right? You got to let me know. I can't stand anyone on this podcast. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey. What if we all talked in English accents for the rest of the night? Hello. I'm game. Good eye. <laughs> Top oh, of the English. evening. Oh, I might get real annoying. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> real annoying. Oh my. I think it's already oh, my annoying. friends right now are saying, "Please, for the love of God." <laughs> <laughs> everyone in England just turned their turned yeah, to different page. Threw their computers out the window. I used to like this fucking podcast. It's a shitty... <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, the it's the worst impersonation of, I've ever heard. It's a bag of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone. I am Carlos Gomez, and uh, this is a Sketch Zone podcast. I think I already said that, but we're going to go ahead and say it again. Sketch Zone podcast. Sketch Zone podcast. Sketch Zone. Sketch Zone. Sketch Zone. Uh, this week we have so. with us. <laughs> okay, let me focus. You guys... <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, this week we have us with us the owner and operator of Creative Images, photographer Keith. Sorry. Yeah. Hello, hello. How's it going? How's it going? Hello, hello. That's a horrible English accent, Keith. It, actually, that's the uh, that's like uh... Southside England. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from right, that's that's where Lennox Lewis is from. <laughs> he has that deep accent also, though. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to. He no. What was it when he, he said so Mike politely? Tyson, <laughs> yeah. He, fought, he went to go fight Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson said something to him. He said he said he was going to eat my children. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. It's so polite. Um, Big as hell. <laughs> so, he said Bro, he was going to eat my children. Did he say that? <laughs> the dingo ate my baby. <laughs> oh, wrong, wrong, yeah. folks. Charlie, wrong. Charlie. <laughs> Charlie bit my finger. All right, all right. Let's pull it together. Pull it Try together. It. Try it. Focus. Let's focus. Introduce me, please. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have to. I feel we were off and running. How many episodes? Uh, so, hey, Keith, how's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. Welcome to this hodgepodge we call Sketch Zone. Sketch Zone. Sketch Zone. Sketch zone. <laughs> uh, with us, as always, we have Charlie B. Williams III. Hello, podcast. Pinterest. Yes, yes, Resident Jack. I'm glad you brought Pinterest that up. Advisor. Resident <laughs> Pinterest advisor is here for all your referencing needs. Hey, Keith. I'm good to be here, Carl. Pinterest. Do you use Pinterest at all? I do. I do. Oh, my yeah. gosh, Keith. See? That's another me. one. It's another win for, for old Chuck over here. <laughs> if you if you need some advice, you have Chuckingham Fountain over there. Oh, no, we're gonna link up. We're gonna link up Chuckingham. Really? Oh, some people's kids. Okay, moving on. And with us we have Jack Casper Zach. Yes, I am here. I am with Yay. us. Yay! Where's the accent? Oh, well. Oh, are we still doing that? I thought we were. Hello, love. <laughs> Hello, governor. <laughs> no, you stop. Easy, peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> Jack does it too well. I don't know why, but... <laughs> yeah. I don't think like our you... Brit listeners would agree. They're probably like, what the hell is... My it's... ears are bleeding. <laughs> no, what do they say? Those type of those type of accents they see on the, uh, on the TV shows, there was like a, something I was watching. Where there's like different Mash. types. 
No, it wasn't MASH. It was like the different <laughs> British TV TV shows, like the different accents de- depending on like what Friends. area in London and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very crazy. We don't let Carlos keep talking in the background. So let's talk about something more important than that. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm waiting on you. Candy Crush check-in. I'm stuck on level 800, but I need some people to unass some help. Like I need fifty my, billion dollars or whatever it is. I need no. Hang on. Before we go to that, <laughs> I need my Candy Crush folks to pull together. I need three of my Candy Crush friends to help me get past the last bridge of Fudge Ford. I'm stuck on level eight hundred, and I need you guys to kick in. What are you talking about? Candy Crush check in. Now hit it again and tell us the real news. Real news. <laughs> Real news is I'm stuck on level 800, and y'all need to kick in because I, I don't appreciate being stuck for days on end waiting for people. Uh, but in other news, uh, you guys know who makes Candy Crush? Uh, I believe it's a German. I, be, I believe they're yeah. I believe they're from Germany. Uh, I don't know who it is. No, it's King. Oh. King. That's uh, how it is. Like King. Creative. Yeah. yeah. King actually just got bought by Activision Blizzard. The Activision Blizzard. Oh, they, that deserves a hand clap. Yeah. Uh, wait. Legit wait now. until. Do you, for how much? For five. Five point nine billion dollars. You know, they're not indie anymore. They're like they're like legit. I guess they were legit a long time ago, but still, now you're owned by. Dude, okay, so let's talk about how much money King was making off of Candy Crush and Soda Crush Saga. Exactly, you could just put that on repeat. Um, these kids were making so much money that they were they were trying to trademark the word Saga, and I think maybe they got it. So you wouldn't be able to say, you know. Barefoot Saga in your game. Or you like, be able to yeah, any, <laughs> insert any medieval <laughs> game ever. Every time you use the word Saga, you have to pay. <laughs> like, you know. Oh, God, it's going to be one of those shows. <laughs> Just uh, like... So, yeah, so they're trying, though, to trademark, right? they're trying to trademark Saga, and I think maybe they snuck that one. <laughs> they snuck that one in, but they had so much money that they were trying to trademark the word candy. See, that one didn't go through, so you'd you'd have to like make a withdrawal on that one. Uh, so yeah, that's how much money they were making. Wait, Saga did go through? I do believe so. Um, I, I think so. The word saga. There, was, there was they 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 took this other company to court because. The name of their game was the Banner Saga. Oh, that's a good company. They're they're like um they're like indie, like a bunch of guys that work together decided to go in. It's there. Go look at the look it up. We'll put it in the show link. Look up this game, Banner Saga. It's like hand drawn, right? It's awesome. It's good. I mean Banner Saga is amazing. It's really, really good. <laughs> okay, no worries. Wait, so is, is like that it's a game or it's a company? It's a game. The name of the game is the Banner, the Banner Saga. <laughs> so it's really, really, really good. It's really good. It's all hand painted. Both of you so guys. So like do it. we have confirmation that they actually trademark this? This is kind of I unbelievable. So. I don't think it's Google search. I think they Party tried, Market. and then they 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 went to. Um, I have a story here, but it's taking too long to get I'm, to the I'm end of it. Good. They dropped it. Yeah. I'm uh, sure well, no, actually, they dropped trying to trademark candy. But they kept on with Saga. Um, <laughs> social and mobile game Sorry. developer King has settled its trademark disputes with the Banner Saga developer Stoic Studio and Candy Swipe developer guys. Albert Ransom, according to statements both developer developers recently released. Woo! Sorry, that was tough to say. So, well, like, the crazy part about this is is the studio that made the Banner Saga. Is nowhere near. They they had really great success with it. It started off as a Kickstarter. It was really really good, but nowhere near uh, Candy Crush Saga. They're nowhere near that in terms of money, even before they got bought. 
by uh, Activision. So that's kind of like a big bully. Area. <laughs> Man, it's like everything. Oh wait, so. Saga. But what about? But what about the Ooh. fact that? <laughs> I'm, there's been wow. plenty of games that have used it before Candy Crush was even around. So this what, is what like, I don't get with trademark law. Why? How does? Yeah, how can they do that? Because didn't didn't something else change? Because like Elder Scrolls and uh, uh, there's a couple of. Oh yeah, there's Elder Scrolls Saga, and then like there's. Yeah, I'm... there's like there's a bunch of other ones, but like, hey, how does that how does that work? Let me read the next paragraph. <laughs> this is dumb Come ass on, story. Get it together. Oh. Get it together, Carlos. Come on. Stoic is pleased to have come <laughs> to an agreement with King regarding Stoic Stoic's The Banner Saga <laughs> trademark. <laughs> Which enables both parties to protect their respective trademarks, and now in the future, now and in the future, the developer wrote this on his website. So, I guess so. The thing about copyright and trademarks is, you might have a copyright, you might have a trademark, uh, but you could lose it if you don't try to defend it. Uh, so, did they already uh, have candy because in the courts will be like trademarks? Will be like what? Did they only already have Candy Crush Saga trademark? Well, the, oh God. the name of the game I can't may stop have been trademarked <laughs> because you can you can you can trademark something um, that you're making money off of. Mm. So Coca Cola has that name trademarked. No one so else if, can use Coca Cola. So if Candy Crush didn't go after it, and somebody else came along and made a game that had that word in it. And they went after it. They could win the trademark over because they did it first. Is that how? Um, it works? That then, kind of yeah. Then Candy Crush would then lose their their oh, trademark. Fun. Well, I and I don't know. I don't know what the what the mm. statute of limitations yeah. are on that. Like but lawyers you are have, getting like two. You have to actively. Years. You have to actively defend your your copyrights and your trademarks. Uh-huh. Who really calls it Candy Crush Saga? Everyone I, says Candy Crush. I used to say Candy Crush Saga. I guess. Yeah. Anyway, we yeah. we might need to go get a lawyer, copyright trademark lawyer, on to talk. Yeah, about we should stuff, have some. It's interesting. Gonna, we got yeah. lots of other questions for them too. But it, but it all boils down to the fact that five point nine billion who gets dollars. That? Hmm. Who gets that money? So did was it one of those things that I don't know owners, if there was I don't like know if they were it. a publicly held company. Yeah, but if they were a publicly yeah. held company, all of that stuff would then get filtered down to the shareholders. If it was, it like, was a privately usual, held company, yeah. If it was a privately held company, then the owners get it. And then mm-hmm. generally, to, if you don't want to be an asshole, then you would then share some of those profits with the people that help you get to that level. Well, they probably so be they would get a nice bonus yeah. check. Generally. So, but so you I'm just wondering, wondering, is it like business as usual? So all the heads are in place, and then just now you they're owned by Activision, or did the owner be like peace out? You know, uh, well, yeah, all of that, life. all of that gets like when they're going through the negotiations. It's not like they're just going to come in and put down 5.9 billion on the table and be like, all right, deuces. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stuff that happens with that, like. They they might they might just take the name of King off the building and put Activision Blizzard up there. Yeah, sometimes and, they rename and then, it too. And then you just keep moving. Yeah. But then there's other times where the owner is like, okay, cool, I did my job. Um, I, I'll take my exit package, and then he jets and or she. Right. You know, well, know. that's what happened to the first studio I worked for when EA bought them out. So mm-hmm. before I got there, they were called New Effects. Right, and right. then EA bought them, and then then they became EA Chicago, and they dropped the new effects when they bought when they absorbed the company, right into the fold, you know. Right, so. and then that's when that's when you see like the owner of the company might not be the owner of the company anymore. Well, he's not the owner of the company anymore because they just got bought out, but he might become like the an head executive of producer yes. or yeah. head of studio or whatever. Mm-hmm. He'll have yeah. he'll have a different title. Yep. <clears throat> Makes sense. Well, congratulations to them. Yeah. Uh, Candy Crush Saga is doing great. We need to we need to come up with a game idea. Uh, Chupi goes goes cow tipping fell short of five point nine billion. You want to know why? Because it wasn't called Chupi Goat Cow Tipping Saga. Saga. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. 
Uh, speaking of <laughs> speaking of successful and rich entrepreneurs, Ooh. you see what I did there? Yeah, I see how you did that. That's pretty. Mr. Good. Keith Sykes, what's going on, my brother? You not rich? Uh, yeah, you guys had me feeling like I was in a statistics class. For a little while, <laughs> like that. <laughs> He's like, I oh, don't know. Oh no! Don't, don't worry, it falls off right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Carlos is horrible at math. <laughs> yeah, two plus two equals jello. Um. So Keith, uh, where where are you from originally? Yeah, I'm from. I'm actually from New Orleans, Louisiana. Now, mm -hmm. Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. No. What? I went there. I've been there a couple times. I had a muffalata. Had, uh, <laughs> had those uh, the little it? donuts. The donuts the, with the powdered sugar. Beignets. Beignets. Oh, dude! I got this bag of coffee that was. It was called Wake the Fuck Up Coffee, and I was like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. So I bought the bag. The bag. I go home and I make it. It was the nastiest. <laughs> <laughs> you just didn't make it right. You just didn't it make it was, right. It was the nastiest, disgusting as coffee I've ever had. It tasted it tasted like yeah, like they made it out of doo doo water. Uh, okay. but that that has nothing to do with you. So you're there in uh New Orleans. Amazing. <laughs> Wait, are you there now? No no no. I'm no, actually no. Where, where are you in North Carolina. In North Carolina. Uh, Carolina. North Carolina right now. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, you you're currently a photographer. You you own and run your own photography business. Yeah, and I actually do it uh, part time. It's actually a hobby of mine. I do it in a part time. I, it's a business that I run, but I do it only part time. My job, I actually work for the army uh, as a, a liaison for soldiers going through a medical evaluation. Uh, who are medically being medically released from the army? Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah, crazy. So let's go to let's go back to uh, New Orleans. And uh, at what point did you were you interested in in being a creative professional? Well, it, it probably all my life uh, actually, because uh, the creative bug runs in my family. My mom was very creative, my sisters, uh, some brothers, even cousins, things like that. So um, the creative vein runs through my family. And for as long as I can remember, I was probably uh, involved in everything visual. You know, from uh, when, when I first started out, I, I, lo I loved to draw a lot. So I used to always have a pen, paper, markers, everything in my hand. So I was drawing on everything, writing everything, uh, everything that I could probably uh, think about. So uh, when all, all through school, I used to do everything artistic, get involved in everything that I could probably put my hands on. And then when I got to high school and eventually college, I uh, started, my, my field of study was graphic design. Oh, so cool. I into, yeah, I went into graphic design for about two years in college. Uh, realized that that's probably not where I was going to make any money. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what led you to that? Right. <laughs> to that conclusion. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what ended up happening was my mom was diagnosed with cancer, so I ended up coming mm -hmm. in the army. Because I was like, I have no idea how I'm going to pay for this expensive education. Uh, so I figured I would I would join the army. So that's what I did. I went to two years of college at Xavier University of Louisiana, and I left there after my sophomore year, and I joined the army. Uh, when I originally, uh, and you know this, Carlos, when I came in the army, I was originally uh, field artillery, uh -huh. uh, and thank God we were afforded the opportunity to get out of that. So <laughs> So I, I, so I was gonna. I was actually gonna sneak that one in there because these guys don't know where we know each other from. Oh, I, and I, I, I actually. So I was gonna. I was gonna be like, okay, so then you joined the army, and then what? Where were you stationed? <laughs> yeah, I have to show Jack <laughs> that before we came on there that you and I met in Germany. So uh, oh, yeah, oh, wow. I, I switched over a, after I switched over to uh, the medical field. Uh, I ended up becoming an X-ray tech. So I was an x-ray tech for 18 years in the Army. Whoa. Uh, 
And that was something that I could have done when I got out, but it's not where my passion was. Uh, I did end up staying in the medical field, but like I said, I'm a liaison for soldiers going through the medical evaluation phase of their career. So uh, being separated. So uh, the passion was always there for everything, visual, photography, things like that. So I decided to do a business uh, on my own to really, you know, keep continue to tap into that uh Creative, yeah. That passion, yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, I want to talk about Germany for a second. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, we were kids together. Yeah. And and I had no idea that I was going to end up here where I am today. Right. Do you remember uh, at the base any computer anything at all? I really don't. Exactly. <laughs> like, like all of the all of the all of the communications <laughs> equipment we had were like these big metal boxes with these yeah. big black dials. Yes. Uh, like, more so, wait, radio, radio or something like that? Or like <laughs> yeah, dude. It was. Uh, you were what? What? Uh, what? You were in the fourth platoon. Yes. Yeah, I was in the second platoon and. Yeah, we were always better than everyone else. And, <laughs> oh wow! Uh, fourth platoon always was always a really close second, but they were always second. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Are you sure they weren't fourth? Uh, nice. I think that's They're because we had, a few, we had a few idiots that was always pulling us behind. So that's yeah, those, those yeah. guys. Uh, so I remember. When we first met, and then obviously when we became friends, we were on the basketball team together. We did we did basically everything together. Right. Um, and you were one of the few people that I do remember walking around with a piece of paper and a pencil. Yeah. And I do remember you always drawing, and and I think that's oh, really? cool. kind of what our our friendship uh, was based off of, because everyone was a knucklehead, but not everyone was a knucklehead with a piece of paper and a pencil trying to draw. <laughs> you know? Did you start drawing then too, um, Carlos? Me? No, I, I was always drawing, but then, um, my platoon was always doing, always trying to, we were always trying to floss. We were always trying to be just, what can we do to be that much better? So then, they had me like I would be I would design like a flag for our platoon and then they would have me doing lettering for s other things and I was always doing more creative stuff um, but I mean this is back in the day where like if you had to do any lettering it was hand lettering you were doing like a, a ruler a pencil <laughs> wow. protractor yeah yeah yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, it was cool. It was it was a lot of fun. But the weird thing is, there was nothing really creative about anything that we did. No. We we basically sat on top of a mountain, um, practiced shooting missiles and guarded guarded missiles. Wow. <laughs> and you know you know what's funny about that, Carlos, is I never even <laughs> knew when we knew each other back then. I never even knew that you were creative in that sense. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know you were into anything artistic, drawing, sketching, anything. I, I never knew that. Because I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know if you remember Kip. Kip Vanatastein, I think. Is I do, I do, I do. He was always, he was the one that was always making me do things. Like, okay, this is the idea. Draw something. And then here's another idea. Draw something else. Uh -huh. um, yeah, but then even like when we were on, on duty up in, you know, up on the site, yeah. uh, I was always doodling out there. Um, yeah, I was always, always drawing, constantly drawing. Wow. Yeah. Um, so then how did your experience in the Army... Um, Influence. Yeah, I know how it influenced your career at all, but it, did it help your artistic career at all? It did. Um, actually, a lot of different. Like, like I, I've always remembered since I was young, looking at things different than the average person. 
Like I would look at something and see it differently. I would, e even when it comes to music, like I would listen to music and hear it different than other people. So I knew there was something different about me when I was young. You know, so then when, like, even now to this day, like, it, it's so loud in my head today, even today, that I know, I, I've always known that it's my passion to do something visual because if I'm, I could be out driving in my car not even with the intent to go out and take photos, but I, I'm, it's almost like I can't even remember driving on the road because I'm looking at everything around me almost like I'm looking at a photograph. So mm -hmm. um, it's just crazy how I look at things, I, and and even when I when I I remember when I first started to notice it, I, it, it really freaked me out when I started to realize how I was looking at things. I mean, it really freaked me out. So then when I started to really tap into it, and and it started to show itself in my photographs, you know, it really blew me away. E even when other people would look at it, they would say that. They would say, wow, you know, uh, the, the common phrase that everybody says is, oh, wow, you have an awesome eye, you know, or you have an mm -hmm. amazing eye, or things like that. But I even notice it, you know, without the, the, you know, patting myself on the back. I mean, I do notice that it's something different in, in a photograph when I look at my own, you know, so. Yeah, you can always teach... You can always teach someone what settings to put. Right. What's what's your aperture? What's your right. shutter right. speed? You know. You can always teach that. How much blurry do I want? Right. But then yeah, like you're you're talking about that eye, it's there's a picture you can take two people, one that has the eye, one that kinda doesn't really have the eye. Mm -hmm. And you can give them the same camera, the same settings and everything, and have them take the same picture. And it, I don't know if it's the tilt of the camera or the angle that they're at or whatever, but there's one picture that will draw people's attention a little bit more than the other one. And that's that's that eye that you're talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so has there been did you did you ever go to any kind of art school at all? I, I went to uh two years of, of School, not 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 oh, a yeah, school, for... art school, but, but I went to. I started off in computer information systems at Xavier University. Right. You said that. Uh, when I started off in that, because and I only started there because I th I say, well, that's where the money is. That's where the money is. But then I realized after the fact. Well, let me let me switch that around. Um, I started off, uh, yeah in com computer information systems and I realized uh, this is really not where my passion is so I switched over to uh, art but I never went to a structured art program never went to a structured art program um, that was a few classes here and there at Xavier University but Xavier University didn't have really an art school they just had an art department so mm -hmm. I mean it was a very awesome it was an awesome instructor there but not like if you went to the the San Francisco School of Art, you know, or something like that, you know, but, um, mm -hmm. so I, I've always told myself that I wanted to go to some type of structured art program or, you know, things like that, but I just never got around to doing it. Yeah, uh, that's the conversation that we always have on this show is, it, and, and it actually came up on, on, there's this guy that's a friend of the show, Will Terry, he's this amazing uh, children's book illustrator yeah. <clears throat> and on his Facebook page he put on there he had a nice long comment and it basically oh, boiled down to yeah. he has this student who has an opportunity to step away from school to start her professional career uh, does she do it or should she stay and uh, and go to school and so that that's the dilemma that that people are always looking at like do I go to school or yeah. you know if you have enough talent and enough drive um, do I just say screw it and jump in and and you're not racking up the debt you know right, right, right. Um, so that's always that that the dilemma that people are always trying to deal with <clears throat> and the interesting thing about photography is with with all of the online schools that are, or even YouTube, really, I, I've learned so much just off of YouTube. And 
the thing with photography is you get your camera, you go out there and you experiment. Right, right. You know, what's it look like when I crank up the ISOs? And what's it look like when I do like this and like that? Right, You'll right. get more out of that and YouTube than I think a lot of the schools do or, or show. School, school might have a, uh, might be like a quicker route, <clears throat> but not everyone has the money for that quick route. <laughs> and, I, and I can tell you, just like, just like with any other, other structured program, a lot of schools, you know, you waste time with a lot of extras. You waste time with a lot of extras of things that you may not ever use. So that's the same thing, with, I'm sure, with photography, where they will probably teach you a lot of additional you know, techniques, information, you know, things that you would probably never even use with photography. So you would probably spend thousands of dollars in extra education learning some things that you could have just gotten on YouTube and, you know, done on your own in a, in a lot quicker time and cheaper, you know, uh, less. And quicker. even, and even, I don't know, do they have any, like, photography groups out there by you? Like, if, yes. even if you go to meetup.com, they yes. have a lot of photography groups. And just hanging out with the like-minded people, you'll learn a lot. Yeah, and, I, and that's what I've been doing. Uh, I, I've done that, uh, actually, for a couple of months prior to even uh, pushing out, trying to get the business thing started. Mm -hmm. I, I did that for a while, but, um, you know, then sometimes you get uh, individuals who are kind of like territorial and you know some people just don't like some some guy who doesn't have any education in that area and just starting out and mm -hmm. you know, but but then on the other on the other end of that there's a lot of people who reach out and, and definitely want to help you in any way that they can so that's pretty cool too yeah yeah what's the what's the coolest project you've worked on so far the coolest project actually I just did it um, I uh, do the group that I told you I'm a part of too, the group, the conversation. Mm -hmm. I actually got linked up with. Uh, there, there's a gospel uh, extravaganza that comes here every year. So all of the big time gospel artists come here for seminars and and concerts and all different things like that, meetups, meet and greets, things like that. So I actually got picked to be a photographer for all of the events, mm -hmm. um, cool. as many that I had time to do. So. Um, that that was a real awesome experience. Awesome experience to be able to see it from behind the scenes and take photos and you know just be down there on the ground seeing everything happen, seeing the crowd reactions. So that that was pretty awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. What do you what do you shoot? The camera. Yeah. I I actually have a, a T5i, but uh, that's what I'm getting ready. So my Christmas gift to myself is yeah. going to, to be to upgrade my camera. Uh, I'm just trying to decide right now what I'm gonna uh, upgrade to. I'm, I'm not. I'm leaning towards the the 6D, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. So mm. you said you always had, you always knew you were uh, gonna end up something in the visual. How how did you land on photography, or how did it land on you? Uh, well, photography came from. I was always taking photos. Uh, for as long as I can remember, not not really thinking that I was going to do anything with it, but I was taking photos way back when you guys remember the the Polaroid camera. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I was taking pictures way back then with a cheap Polaroid camera I used to have, and then uh, moved on from there and had a cheap Kodak camera, uh, and then moved on from there and had a uh, X-ray machine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I was using an X-ray machine at one point. But uh, yeah, were, you, so hey, I, were you ever were you ever in a situation where you're taking someone's X-ray and you're like, all right, now give me something sassy? <laughs> only yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, uh, only only Carlos, only Carlos. <laughs> That's what he would have done. <laughs> like, All right. Board on a Monday. I actually, actually, I will, I will tell you this funny story about me <laughs> as an X-ray tech. I, I was actually, I wasn't an official X-ray tech yet. I was in OJT in Fort Fort Polk, Louisiana, uh, going to OJT on a job training to become an X-ray tech. So I'm a young student there at the hospital, and we. We get to the point where they just feel comfortable to let us go in the room and take take our trays on our own. So I bring this lady in, and the funny thing about it, Carlos, she was German. The lady was German. Uh, so she didn't really speak. 
a whole lot of English, and I was taking a chest x-ray of her. So I gave her the gown, and I don't know if you're familiar with x-rays at all, but in a chest x-ray, all you have to do is make sure that they don't have anything metal up top. They could actually leave a t-shirt on if they have it. If it's a bra that doesn't have any snaps or anything like that, you can leave it on. So I give her the gown, and I said, remove everything up top that has any snaps in it or anything like that. You can leave everything else on and put the robe on. So I give her that. She goes in the waiting room. I go behind the control panel to get everything set up and come back out, and she is completely unclothed with just the gown on, and the gown is open to the back. And at that, <laughs> moment, at that moment, I get so nervous because I'm thinking, oh, my God, if somebody walks in here, I'm totally going to get <laughs> – I'm going to jail because they're going to think I did that on purpose. So, um, yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> now, that's that's the interesting thing. In Germany, <laughs> in Germany, they're, they're, the culture is different. Like, they oh. look at nudity in a completely different way. Do you remember that water park we used to always go to? I, was, I just told somebody, matter of fact, my supervisor. I just told my supervisor that, that story two days ago. <laughs> I just told my supervisor that. Took Dude, that they had this indoor water park. We used to go there all the time. And uh, mind you, we're like, seven, I was 17. You're, I don't know, 37. <laughs> <laughs> we're, so oh, wow. we're just we're just kids, and and then you know we're out swimming, and they had the wave pool, and they had these. We used to they had these uh, water slides that were tubes, and we used to just pile in on that and like beat each other's ass all the way down these tubes. So then after that, we're like, all right, cool, let's go to the let's go to the uh, the steam room or the sauna, whatever the hell it's called. So we go in there. And the Germans are like, uh, 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 you got to come in here butt naked. We're like, uh, okay. So we go and put all our clothes back. We go, we go and sit down. We're sitting there talking, and then like just a gang of girls comes walking in butt ass naked, and we're like, what? <laughs> it was different. different. I <laughs> I went and took a cold shower. <laughs> It was pretty crazy. Yeah, they, they're the European culture when it comes to that stuff is so completely different than here. Uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty different. cool. It was pretty, it was <laughs> pretty cool. It was different. <laughs> it's different. Yeah, it's different. Uh, wow. <laughs> I knew that was coming. So, yeah, I know. Yeah, was, sorry. <laughs> uh. So then you started your your company, and uh, it, how how old is your company? It's actually a little bit less than a year, a little bit less. Okay. Than a year. Yeah, um, I, when when I was really heavy into taking a lot of different photographs and things like that, uh, I would get a lot of advice from friends, family, saying you really should start a business. You know, and, and I really didn't want to go that route because I didn't really want it to be a job. You know, I just wanted to do it. I, I really did it for just fun. Mm -hmm. And in the very beginning when I did it, um, when a lot of times I was just taking photos just to take photos for myself. Uh, just to, Sometimes I would put photos up or, or just take them just because I love taking photos. And the way the business got started is I got uh, some people that started asking me, hey, have you ever thought about you know, doing this as a business, and I said, no, not really. Uh, so I did that, and uh, the first time I actually, I remember actually charging someone, you know, it, the way it made me feel to be able to get money for doing something that I would absolutely do for free. I was like, oh man, this this is like amazing. You know, so what was your first? What was your first project? Uh, my first project was actually I, I just did like a, a a portrait session for a person that wanted photos just because they hadn't done they had never done a photo shoot before. Ooh. So they they actually asked me this this was before I actually charged. So somebody asked me, hey, had you ever thought about uh, because in the beginning I did only landscape photography, so I would go around just taking pictures and. Mm -hmm. uh, so the way I ended up selling, I ended up selling my first photograph was somebody saw one of my photographs and said, hey, you know, uh, 
you ever thought about selling them? And I said, no, not really. So I ended up selling uh, one of my photographs, one of my, my landscape photographs. And the way I came up with the price was I told the lady, I said, well, just tell me how much you would pay for it. And she said, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, just tell me. And so to give me the chance to tell her how much I think she should pay for it, I was like, wow, that's that's pretty amazing. So I, I was just trying to think how, how much time it took me, the effort it took me, whatever, and it really wasn't anything. So I said, well, just tell me how much you'll pay for it. So she said, I don't know, $100. So at that point in time, I was like, wow, $100 for probably, I mean, less than two minutes of work and just nice. taking a picture. Yeah. So... Uh, that that was the start of it all. I was like, man, I, this is definitely something I need to look into. Yeah. So that that's how it started. I took a, a, a I sold a couple of uh, of my landscape portraits, uh, entered a few in some contests, exhibits, things like that. Got some great feedback, and everything took off from there. So I, somebody approached me and said, hey, have you ever thought about doing portrait uh, photography? And I did a job for someone. I think I ended up taking a few photographs and got paid. I, I think I only told them like seventy-five dollars or something, and they paid that so quickly. Uh, and it was like maybe about 30 minutes, thirty minutes to work. So I was like, "Wow, this is awesome!" So, Say quick before he changes his mind. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, because I don't, I don't think he realizes he's getting beat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. so, Jack, what do you, what do you say to someone like that? Because I know you do artwork and you do illustrations and you you sell a lot of your own stuff um, what do you say to someone like Keith that that would he's he'll do it for free if you let him I mean I definitely wouldn't do it now but but I put <laughs> back then right? go back if he no, said no, what no, you say to you? listening he's like loud listen we got wait, wait, wait a minute one second <laughs> I mean we have talked about this now. you know more than once on here and I mean when you're when you're getting started it's it's like you're just so eager for the experience the learning and, experience yeah and I I know some of our veteran artists we've had on here and I even to some degree think it myself that you should never work for free but I've done it, um, and I think, I think especially if you're in a transitional point, like if you have a if you have a day job and you're trying to make this a transitional point, you can get away with it. Um, but it doesn't, you know, it does encourage the I don't, don't want to say mistreatment, but the abuse of a free artist, and it definitely encourages the mentality that you know art is 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 what's the word I'm looking for is. Um, should be free because it's disposable. Oh. Um, yeah, but, I, just had, I just had that conversation too. But that said, I mean, I don't know. It's it works wonders for pretty. I mean, I don't know if anyone on this panel has never done something for free. I mean, I think almost everyone has done it, and it it's it's a great way to get started, and you have that early passion and drive, and it's kind of. Um, but that said, so when you get further on in your career, you want to get paid, but you also deserve to get paid because you have the experience and you have more to bring to the table. So I think the two go hand in hand, but it's, uh, I don't know, it's a tricky tricky little thing that, that I know we've discussed many times on the show, and I, I don't know if there's a great, clear answer. I think it's, it's, it's almost like a science experiment. Mm -hmm. uh, someone sees... Someone sees your work and they say, "How much would it be?" Because I'm kind of running into this right now. Because after Inktober, uh, there's a lot of people that are interested in in being drawn and and having a portrait done. And Keith is actually Keith and I are going to work together here uh, on the project. <clears throat> But Keith is like family to me, so he gets a severe family discount. But th so, like talking to him is easy. But like, what do I say to a stranger out there that says, "Hey, how much do you charge?" So the science experiment is this: you start high, <laughs> and see if yeah. they flinch, and see if they flinch. <laughs> nice. Right. So you say, "I don't know, what's two hundred dollars sound like?" Right. And then if they go, ooh, you're like, all right, well, what do you want to? That's what. That's what. What do you want to pay? If they say twenty five dollars, then that you know it might not be worth your 
worth your time. Um, but yeah, find out what people are, are willing to pay because that's actually what happens in the real world when you're when you're buying a yeah. buying or selling a house, you're buying or selling a car, yeah. when you're negotiating your salary. The, all of this, all of this is kind of the the same tool set that you should use. You go in, you make an offer, they make a counter offer, and then you figure out what they're willing to pay. Your artwork. Is Farm fair market value should be. Right. If your artwork is really good, and the better you get, the more efficient you get. Yeah. The more you can charge for it. Right. But all that to say, I'm on the side of don't work for free, because then what's going to happen is you're going to get. Jack and I have had this conversation before too. You're what you're going to have is. Um, you you as an artist have a responsibility to protect the value of not just your work but everyone else's work because if you go yeah. in and you say yeah uh you know it, it don't matter i i'll, I'll do it for $10 mm. and everyone else is charging $200 then you know you're you're messing up the bell curve yeah right. um and then if there's an artist that's maybe not quite as good as you and they see that you're charging ten dollars, they're gonna say, Well, I'm not even I'm not even that good. I'll do it for free, just for experience, just for the exposure, just to have something on my resume. Right, so right. now you've officially you've accidentally yet officially have ruined the fair market value for what it is that you're for your skills. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, so Ooh, that was heavy. <laughs> Dropping knowledge over there. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, bro. I got to pay bills. Ah, <laughs> uh, so, so let's talk about the transition, Keith. Do you see yourself ever becoming a full-time photographer? I I don't think so. I, I think photography will probably play a part in the things that I do. Um, because uh, this is something that we talked about uh, before we went on air. Um. I actually mentor uh, young boys, um, and and one of one of my reasons for doing that, um, it's always been a passion of mine. I just never really got into it heavily until this year. Um, so here at, at a local elementary school, I mentor fourth and fifth graders, mm -hmm. and at a middle school, I mentor sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Um, so it's something that I do. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll be doing it this Friday, and. Uh, uh, something that I really enjoy doing, and I and I feel like uh, when I was growing up, my dad was always a part of my life. But my dad worked so hard that he was never at home. I mean, he was always working, taking care of the family because I'm the youngest of eight kids. Mm. Uh, so we lived in the projects in New Orleans, Louisiana, in a three bedroom apartment, uh, and and. Uh, with today's standards, I mean, we were extremely poor, but you couldn't have told me that way back then. And there. I mean, I thought we had it going on back then. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I, I think that photography is going to probably be my way to express myself in every avenue that I feel like I need to. And I, I think it's probably going to be my one of my ways of communicating with other people. Uh, who are outside of the the, the visual realm? I, I think okay. mm -hmm. uh, because my my uh, my tagline for my business is a photograph should be taken so that no words are necessary. Because um, I believe that that's what you, what should happen when you look at a photograph. You should be able to have your own. Like it, I don't necessarily have to see the same thing that you see, but it definitely speaks to me when I look at a photograph. So I feel like that's what my photographs do to the, for the people that I take them for. Hmm. Awesome. So now let's talk about this mentoring thing because I think this is yeah. important. Uh, how did you get into mentoring? Uh, actually, uh, it, like I said, it's always been a passion of mine. I just... Uh, I just never really got into a position to be able to do it to the level that I'm doing it right now. And I had a friend of mine link me up with somebody uh, for uh, photography purposes. It was actually to link me up with someone for the purpose of giving me a photographer mentor. 
mm-hmm. for this person to be my mentor to teach me That's photography cool. and things like that. So uh, when we got linked up together and we started talking about things that we had in common, I saw on his Facebook page that he ran uh, a mentoring academy. Mm. So I was like, wow, this is awesome. You know, he, he is into photography. He started a mentoring academy. So now the mentor, mentoring academy is four years old. So I got linked up with that. And then through this uh, other organization that I'm a part of, the conversation that I told you about, which is a, a group of, of local small business owners, um, I got linked up with another, another mentoring op- opportunity through the elementary school. So I started doing both of those pretty much simultaneously and uh, just been leading to some great opportunities. Uh, and then through that, uh, you remember my, my ex-wife, Simone, uh, who we were all stationed together in Germany, uh, reached out to me to be a part of this youth summit in Orlando, Florida in January of next year. So I'll be going to... Huh? I lost the uh, I lost the sound effect for that, but please insert Orlando. Oh, yeah. I love you, Orlando. You <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. <Yeah, same. laughs> so, so what is this youth summit in Florida? What what's what's it called? Yeah. So the youth summit, uh, it's it's actually called Youth Summit 2016. Okay. It's part of the uh, Wom Wom Tech Foundation, which is W O A M. TEC uh, Foundation, and uh, one of their, they're actually, they have uh, branches in Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, Charlotte, North North Carolina, other cities. I think it's like seven cities that they have branches in, but their main uh, branch is out of uh, Orlando, Florida. So they deal with foster kids who are about to be uh, aged out of the system. So when you get to 17, 18, you're no longer allowed to be in a foster home. Wow. Or foster with a foster family, so these mm-hmm. kids are often left out on the street and left to fend for themselves. So wow. this organization actually uh, cares for these kids and takes care of them and mentors them and you know guides them and does things like that. So uh, she reached out to me to be a part of this whole summit that's going on January eighteenth, two thousand sixteen, in Orlando, Florida. So I'm actually going to take. Uh, a team, probably about ten of us, are going to go there and be a part of that summit. Oh, cool! Yeah, that's that is very cool. So, uh, forgive me for asking the obvious and maybe stupid question, but what what does the mentoring entail? Like, what what is a like? Are you paired up with an individual? Is it a group? And then, what what kind of um, ongoing or singular? Now, 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 right now, you're asking about the mentoring that I do here or the one that we're doing, getting ready to go to in Orlando? Uh, yeah. Well, probably both, but yeah. I, I guess the, yeah. the, the one you're doing here. Okay, so, so the one that I do for the elementary school, um, the school, the elementary school that I'm doing the mentoring at is uh, a poorly funded school, and a lot of the kids there are in pretty much bad situations. So they're in single parent homes. Some of them are being raised by their grandparents. There's probably situations where they don't really have an official guardian. Uh, there's even uh, some homeless families at this school, the elementary. Uh, so what we basically do is we go in three times a month. Uh, we can go, we're, we're uh, obligated to go in three times a month, but we can go in as many more times as we want. Uh, so we spend time with them in the classrooms, we help them with their homework, uh, and all of the time that we interact with them is during school hours. So after school hours, we, we, we may give them a phone call just to see how they're doing and things like that. But there's no interaction after school uh, for, for you know security reasons, things like that. Um, and all of the interaction that we do is during school hours. So uh, one Saturday out of the month, we do uh, an event with them on a Saturday where we do just anything. Take them to a movie, take them out to eat, uh, take them to get haircuts, just anything like that where we spend time with them. But there's a school administrator present also. Uh, So that's what we do with the elementary. Uh, With the uh, middle school, uh, there's a topic that comes up uh, quarterly. Uh, and basically with that, you go in and you uh, give the kids life skills, advice, uh, 
just guidance from different points of view like that. So we're basically speaking to them on different occasions on every quarter. So it's not really going in there doing anything hands-on. It's just constantly being that, that male figure that's going to come in the classroom and speak to them uh, on, a, on a quarterly basis. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Now, now the organization that's going, the, the summit that's going on in Orlando, there's going to be all different types of things. There's going to be uh, where you're sitting down in, in like uh, roundtable discussions where you're talking to them about their their concerns, their desires, their future endeavors, things like that. There's going to be uh, uh, resume writing classes. There's just a whole lot of different wide a wide range of things that that are going on that we can partner up with to be involved with the kids to help them out with that. So then, so then what do you get out of this? It's actually just something, because like I told you before, uh, my dad was always there, but I didn't have that male figure in my life. Um, my brothers were there, um, because my mom, there's four boys and four girls, and I'm the youngest of eight. So my brothers were there, but I was, there was a 10-year gap between me and my next youngest sibling. Wow. So all of my brothers and sisters were pretty much out there on their own doing their thing or whatever. So all of my life, probably my entire life from the age of, uh, from the time I was born until I was 20 years old when I left for the military, I was raised by my mom and my sisters for the most part. Oh. Um, like my, like I said, my brothers were there, but you know how, how guys are. They were out there doing guy things and things like that. So, um. <laughs> My thing is I, I would love to be that role model slash mentor for that young male kid who doesn't have a father or may have a father who the, and the father is just not you know, uh, active yeah. in their lives, um, just to show them that no matter what their circumstances are, no matter what background they came from, that, you know, Carlos, we talked about this before we even went on the air, that to show them that no matter where you come from, anything is possible. I mean, you could end up. 5, 10, 15 years from now, owning your own business, yep. you know, mm -hmm. surrounded by friends who are helping you get to the next level, you know, all, all, all things like that. So I really think that the, the importance of it is the people that you surround yourself with. So I definitely uh -huh. want to be that person that they see, that they know, oh, okay, anything is possible, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm showing them that it is, I'm telling them that it is, I'm, I'm giving them all types of tools that can make them feel like it's possible. You know. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any uh, stories, like good, good, memorable ones that kind of would sell it to somebody who might be thinking of doing this? Doing uh, photography, mentoring, mentoring. 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 Absolutely, yeah. Because uh, so the the first when I when I first switched or when I first offered my time to be able to speak to the kids, uh, that was my first time doing it. And like I said, I've always wanted to do it. I just never had the opportunity to do it. So the the first time I went to the middle school and I spoke to the seventh graders, the first time I went, I spoke to a group of seventh grade boys. And I went in and not knowing what to expect, uh, I yeah. spoke to them about uh, self-worth, success, peer pressure, things like that. So um, I tried to keep it on a seventh grade level. I didn't really want to speak above their heads and things like that. So I was just talking yeah. to them about those different topics. Spoke for about 45 minutes, and then uh, the kids were getting ready to head on to their next class. So I go back to the, I'm getting ready to head out of the class so I can get out of there and sign out, so I can get out of there. And one of the kids comes up to me after the uh, session, and he says, uh, can I ask you a question? And I say, yeah. He said, uh, how old are you? <laughs> I, I really didn't know why that was even relevant, but I, I said, maybe, maybe because I don't look my age, that's probably why he's asking me that. So I, I told him how old I was, and he said, uh, um, are, do you live here? And I said, yeah, I live in Rayford, uh, which is the city right, city right next to Fayetteville. And he said, oh, wow. He said, I live in Rayford, too. And I said, oh, okay. And he said, um, do you think it's possible if I keep in touch with you? And I said, well, I said, we're not allowed to do that. Uh, any, all, the only thing we can do is speak to you when we come here, but I'm not allowed to make any contact with you after hours. I said, because your school doesn't have an official mentoring program. This is just something where we come and speak. Now, that's with the middle school, but the elementary school actually has an official mentoring program. So I told him, I said, um, 
I'm going to be coming back again uh, next quarter, which is December, and I'll definitely look you up and and we can do that. He said, okay. He said, I really I really did enjoy your time being here. So something like that, where somebody that young, you can obviously see that you've made a difference in them in just 45 minutes. Yeah. You know that that made me. I mean, if, if nothing else happened positive that day, I felt so good about that. So that. That wasn't it. So I leave that. I leave the classroom and I go to the office to sign out. And another kid came and uh, said, uh, "Mr. Keith," he said, "Are you getting ready to leave?" And I said, "Yeah." He said, "Are you coming back?" And I said, "Yeah, I'll be back next quarter." He said, "Okay, cool." And he goes skipping off. And I, I'm telling you, man, at that point, I actually felt like a superhero. At that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that that was awesome, and it made me see that. You know that's definitely needed, uh, and it made me know that I was in the right place. Yeah, that's 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 so good when you get a when you get a confirmation like that, um, because uh, I like you never know how if you're reaching. Because sometimes you know when you talk, especially when you're talking to younger kids, they can give you those like blank stares. <laughs> you don't you don't yeah. know if you're if you're if you're getting through. Um, but you know I I find even even with I do a little bit of teaching on the weekends now at a non-for-profit art center on set early on Saturday mornings, teaching uh, teaching kids uh, a free software, free 3D software called Blender, and like this whole place, which is called Marwin, is a really cool like center for kids. They ship them from all around the city, and like uh, it's non-for-profit, so it's totally free to the students. All the teachers there are actual artists. So it's actually kind of cool, um, Carlos, uh, Carlos or Jack. If you ever back in Chicago, I want to take you over there. It's really cool because being a part of this like uh, center now, I'm on this like thread with all these other artists and stuff like that. So I'm always hearing about new like you know uh, showings at either the Sable Museum or or you know the the American uh, Latino Museum here in the city or whatever. Because all these they call they call them artist teachers or whatever. And they just teach teach kids, and they have classes all throughout the week. But it's totally free. It's a place for these kids to come um, from all over the city. You know, they, you know. Sometimes, you know, they talk about how they're tired or whatever like that. But it's a really good good group of kids, and all of them really want to be artists. Some of them are really good. You know, like uh, even this past week, uh, we were like we had the kids uh, drawing all their concepts so they can model them in 3D and some of them are like just amazing artists. There's this one girl that's just an amazing artist by hand. You know, inked her stuff and stuff like that. You know, it's just really good, just really good, you know, but like very, very shy or like literally it's like hiding her uh, her, her <laughs> sketchbook. But she's really good. <laughs> she's like the best in the class. You know, she has this little she has this anime style of course it's probably that's her influence, right? But it's like really good though. You know, proportions are good. Everything's good. It's not just she's just not drawing anime just to draw it. Yeah. You know, she's really, really, really good at it. You know, and she looked like she's maybe, I say she's maybe ninth grade, ninth or tenth grade. I'm like, no, it's really good. You know, when you see when I, I want to see another one next week so I can say it's really good. <laughs> you know, I tend to give her a little bit, little bit of uh, confidence because you know she's really shy and everybody in there has a different story. And a lot of them, I'm so surprised with it's accelerated kind of right. So it's only t it's only eight weeks or whatever. They're extending it to ten week classes, but I'm so impressed at how much they learn in a couple weeks. So like it's you could definitely see the ones that like really get into it. Look forward for look forward to you coming. Come in, shake your hand, call you Mr. Williams or whatever. <laughs> you know it's so weird. I still still not used to that, but I totally <laughs> I could totally like um, I totally get it when uh, when somebody comes up to you after class and they're like, okay, cool, I'll see you next week then. You know, and you're like, oh, that's cool. You know, I, I really enjoy it. So yeah, I'm, I really liked liked your story there. Yeah. There's a there's a website that I participate with. It's called Nepris N E P R I S dot com, and what they do is they reach out to professionals, and we have it's kind of like a hangout, but they have their own software. Um, but they they bring me into different high school classrooms and they want to talk to the kids about whether it's animation or multimedia or whatever it is. So, I mean, and they have also other things like they have like super smart people talking about science and planets and gravity and all this stuff. 
Um, so, uh, so yeah, I think I I know for my, for myself, I do things like that because I remember being a kid, and I know things are a little bit different these days because you have your YouTubes and you have like everything is on twenty four seven, so you can go out there and and find things out. But yeah. I remember being a kid and not knowing that any of this was possible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I drew because I like to draw, not because I thought I would ever make a, a, a living out of it. Yeah, I mean, the information's all out there, but a lot of kids, I mean, I didn't even know that you could. Like, I didn't know the information was there until somebody told me. Like, yeah, that's the same there, way. But you yeah. have to, like, know that it's there, and you have to know what and to even, look for. With it's like a dictionary. Method. All the words are there, but in order to look up how to spell something, I mean, you got to know how to spell something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it went through so many channels in that way, even even in high school with <laughs> that. You know, I literally, you know, thought I was gonna go into like programming, but then knew then I didn't didn't like that. Thought I was gonna be an architect, getting a little closer, but didn't like that. But I knew I liked animation, I knew I liked computers. So I literally thought to myself, Oh, I'll try to do computer animation or something like movies or something like that and I told my uh counselor that at school and I just put the two words together. She was like she, you know how you fill out the little form, they tell you put things that you like. She's like, oh, you can get a degree in computer animation or whatever. I'm like, shut up. I just put two words together. <laughs> so I'm, thinking, so I'm thinking in my head, stop it. You know, that's cool. I'll go. It's like, because you know, you know a little bit. You know about cartoons and Disney and like you didn't really, and it was just, we were just getting all the cool 3D, 3D films. Like, you know, middle to late 90s, right? That's what, that's what I'm talking about coming out of high school um, at the very end, right before. And it was like, it was such a, I was like, oh, wow, that worked out good. Now I can go and look this up and try to look it up. But, you know, you still had to go to the library and do all this stuff because the Internet didn't have a bunch of stuff. If you didn't have websites that you really wanted to go to or knew about, the searching wasn't as good yet. So I still remember yeah. going to the library and my mom saying, well, you need to go down to the library and, and do some research. Have one of the librarians help you out. I'll pick you up in a couple of hours. You know, you know, and don't just read comic books. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I happened across my whole career. It was, it was a few things that happened, but this one thing that happened that I know for a fact kind of triggered the the idea. Um, I was actually a, a mental health technici technician at um, at a hospital in Chicago. And I was going to get into psychology. I was going to do all that. Um, but then while I was working at the hospital, there was a couple guys that I worked with. They would always drink the coffee and never make more. <laughs> and so I would draw, and I would draw, like, wanted posters of them. And, oh. like, it, you know, if you drink the coffee, damn it, make more. Mm -hmm. Or, like, different things, like, if you did something silly, you'd be put on blast in the office, and you there's like things, you know. And so those people that were there, they're like, dude, you got to get the hell out of here. <laughs> you got you got skills, and you're not gonna make money in the psychology. You need to get the hell out of here. And so That's awesome. that mixed with like one of my elderly patients almost passed away, and that was really heavy. And I think I was like 21, 22 when all this stuff was happening. So one of my elderly patients almost passed away, and I was like, this is heavy. I want, I want to draw pictures. So oh, I, so I, quit. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't I quit the whole pack. Wow, not here. You, know? <laughs> you can't keep doing that, man, because you'd make friends each time. It'd be yeah. a really <laughs> bad job for you. You would make friends each time, and then you know, after whatever set amount of time, It'd be like losing a family member, yeah. all the time. Yeah, dude. So I much. Respect her name was Mary. Before. My my uh, my uh, my patient's name was Mary, and she was she almost passed away one night, and I was like, I can't do this. This is like my grandmother almost died, you know. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, anyway, so uh, as a kid, I never knew that any of this was possible, and at the time, none of this was possible. Let's be let's be honest. I mean, Keith and I just got done talking about being in the army. Uh, and they never had a computer. I remember they got a computer when Gerald was was working uh, Gallman. Yeah, yeah. Gallman was working in the office, and I think I had 
like maybe two months left, and he got a computer, and he didn't know how to set it up. So I was in the office with him setting it up. That was that was kind of my first exposure to a computer. I was like, let's plug this in here. Let's do like this. And then the thing started going, crack, 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 you know what I mean? Wow. And I was like, okay, cool. My job here is done. <laughs> <laughs> Normally that noise is a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like you then. messed it up. Yeah, not back then, dude. That was <laughs> like, you messed it up. You had to get the, you had to get the paddles out and get the gerbils to get running. <laughs> you know. Okay. Anyway, uh, hey, can, where do you where do you find your influences, photography wise? Um, and and actually, uh, it's it's funny you say that because we were just talking about Pinterest. Um. Because I, I'm telling you, man, when I when I got hip to print Pinterest, speak on uh, it. First of all, that that, that site is addictive, man. I'm speak telling you, speak on it. <laughs> so what I do it, but it, it it's really amazing. Especially, I'm sure with a, a lot of people in different fields feel the same way. Like, of course, a chef, you know, somebody who cooks can do the same thing because you can find all kind of recipes. But let me tell you, with my photography, I literally, whatever I'm going to shoot, if it's a landscape, if it's a uh, because I did this a couple of months back. I did a, a shoot for a, a local model here. I did a swimsuit um, shoot, and okay. on Pinterest, and I looked at some of the. That wasn't the coolest project you've done. That, that wasn't the coolest. Probably, probably one of them. <laughs> <laughs> he has a lot. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so I I did that, and I was just looking at like. Because what what I do is I, I I try to when I'm when I'm shooting a, a a shot I try to shoot the shot in a way that the average person would not the average photographer would not you know I mean there are common shots that I'll shoot but I just try to do things from a whole different perspective you know just something that looks different so um Pinterest is definitely the inspirational shot, uh, site for that so you can find all types of things. You know, photography related on there. Mm -hmm. You know, different. Is that weird, Carlos? Yeah, I don't know what that was. Yeah, I don't know. Um, what oh. I don't know. Uh oh. And now you're flickering. Yeah, so that that's what I'll do. It whatever types, uh, whatever type of shoot that I'm doing, I'll just type it in Pinterest and look at the different inspirational shots up there and let it go from there. That's awesome. Have you heard of that website, 500 Pixels? Yeah, yeah, I, and I've been on there a few times too. Don't, I, I, and I and I'll go back and tell you a little bit about my own photography. Like, I, I one of the things that I'm going to get into a little bit more, just because I can have a wider uh, range of what I can do with my photography, uh, is I'll probably do a lot, start a lot more with the uh, with the uh, Photoshop and things like that. But I. I, I try to stay away from the heavy editing in my photos and things like that because I want. Oh, to you try to go all natural, no, no, yeah. no post production yeah. on it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So um, I do a little bit of editing, but but I try to get myself accustomed to the way I want the shot to end up is the way that I take it. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Do you do more settings on the camera then, just to ensure that like? You're trying to you're trying to get the look or the exposure that you want. Then and you just say, okay, whatever happens after I click this is what I'm gonna accept. Not so much, because what I'm saying is, or, or, or let me explain it this way. This probably get you understand it better. Um, I, I'll take the shot that I really want to take, so I'm not gonna add a whole lot more to the photo in post editing. Mm -hmm. post. But I will soften something up or add a little bit. Of oh, okay, a okay, okay. Yeah. Drama or effect to it like that, but the photo when you see it, if I post it, it's not very far from the original photo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why they say the, the photographers say, if you get it right in the camera, you don't have to do a lot of post. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And Keith, what would you say your uh, when you when you are doing your 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 photography business, um, what what is the Type of work that keeps you the most busy, or like, or you get the most calls with, or because I know a lot of photographers, they get into their like niches, you know, of like this makes 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 me a lot of money, or people ends up 
end up liking that I take them this kind of way for whatever reason. It's not necessarily maybe my favorite, or it is your favorite, could be your favorite. But which which uh, section of photography will you say that your work has kind of uh, uh, leans toward when 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 doing it professionally um, for for jobs? Like in, in our area, there's a lot of there's there's a lot of models here. Like, really? Okay. Yeah, a lot I didn't of, know that. Yeah. Well, okay. well, there's a lot of models, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, actresses, actors, and actresses. So, um, I, I've been doing a lot of shoots for you know, like headshots and things like that. Um, really? Do a lot of portrait photography. Like, if somebody wants a special occasion, like if they just graduated from high school or college, or you know, just like uh, they just made forty. Or fifty, fabulous fifty, fabulous forty, something like that. They want to shoot. So I, those have been like a lot of uh, uh, shoots that I've been doing lately. Now I've been asked to do a lot of weddings. I I've never shot a wedding. <laughs> I don't think I ever want to do a wedding. You kind of strut. Uh, I hear you. Stray away from it. Do you just stray away from it because I do. You know, I do. Um, like... and, and I've had some really close friends who have asked me to do their weddings, and I'm like, I don't want those. I don't want those problems. Yeah, because I'm, like I'm, a... I'm right there with you, Joe. You become I, a regular, right? At that point, I've actually, I've really? actually done. I actually got hired to do a fashion photo shoot. Now that's a lot of fun. I had like six models, and they're just in the other room getting dressed yeah. and undressed, and dressed yeah. and undressed, and it it was just like click and click and click. Uh -huh. The one thing that I did learn is I need another camera body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you could go, if you can go to work with two cameras, one with a wider angle and one Absolutely. with like a Absolutely. portrait one, then you can go to work and just be like click click click. But I was, I'd take some pictures and then change the lens and a, uh huh, man, it's a lot of work. So but is it cool easier to have is, one? The cool thing, set up for you there, okay. Yeah. So the cool thing is, um, <laughs> it's a fashion photo shoot. You can do some, you can do some work in and whatever, and you and. The guy was super excited about it, but then when people start talking about coming to do your wedding like that, I can I can I can ask these models to come back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't ask you to redo your wedding. That's yeah. a lot of pressure. <laughs> oh, so you're talking? Oh, I didn't think about. It. So you're talking about from the pressure aspect of yes, yes. getting the right shot. So you're probably taking right. hundreds, if not thousands, of photos, and no one thinks about the afterwards, right? Like the work that it takes to now, like you have to be the one to sift through all the photos. Oh, that part I don't even that. mind. That part really? I don't even mind. Yeah, of like imagine, imagine, if you're, imagine if you're taking a picture of someone's wedding, right? It's the one day that they want it to be perfect, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And something as simple as if you're outside and you're shooting at an ISO 100 yeah. but then the sun starts to set and you forget to change your ISO to like a 500 so now it's all and all your pictures dark. are just and i know that you can look in the back of your camera and take a look and then you oh yeah get but just I, there's a lot in of the hustle and bustle yeah <laughs> there's well, a lot of pressure there whereas you take my wedding for instance with that we were i i was always like surprised at how they the photographer we had was able to create a book like a day later, and they were all really good shots. Yeah, remember? I like agree. that takes like on. I we had a I had a I had my wedding in Cabo, but like so it was on the resort. But at the same time, I still don't understand where they got this book. It was a hardbound book. It was shot nice. All the pictures were perfect. It's just like think about that, like, you retiring, like, for you guys that are photographers, think about if you retired, <laughs> you're, like, you're like the resident photographer there. It's it's pressure, right, every day, but it's a nice gig, but still. Well, look, you're right. The cool that. thing is, by the time you get, like, that guy is probably part of the package with the hotel. Oh, right. we got some he guy was. here. So that guy knows how to shoot on sand. Because when Charlie got married on the beach, and it was a bright sunny day, and it was white sandy beaches, and and it was the sun was setting beautiful. beautiful remember? Yeah, but it Crazy. was bright. Oh, God. <laughs> that, sun, that sun was beaten down, and so dude knows. I mean, there's there's things that you know that you do and you don't do. You don't shoot into the sun. You uh, you don't make people stare into the sun. There's a bunch of things yeah. that you have to 
remember, but then there's like you have to remember so much, and you have to like okay. So for photographers out there that want to get into wedding photography, hang out with a wedding photographer as much as you possibly can. Yeah, they were yeah. good. And then when you know, and they're gonna ask you, give me this, move like that, hold the light here, hold the flash there, and you're gonna do a lot of stuff, and that's how you're gonna get ramped up. Yeah. Um, and then what you do is when they're done, usually if it's a really cool wedding photographer, they'll say, yeah, if you want, grab your camera and take some shots. And, and you can then get some practice getting in there too. And then you know, you know, there's certain shots that you want to have and you you get your practice that way. But to put j just to go in cold wow. turkey, nope. Yeah. <laughs> and nope. you have to deal with people too, right? Huh? Right. Right, then you have to deal with people also. Like, yeah, absolutely. how do you get people to do what you want? Yeah, and, and don't let the wedding, and don't let any of the family members be somewhat of a photographer. Because oh. they're going to no like this, no like that, and do like this, and move like that. And you're like, okay, so I'm here to take pictures, you're here to eat dry ass chicken, so just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it, was, it seems stressful. To say the yeah, least. it's it's a lot, and and if it was anything else, fine. But if it's that one important day that everyone, oh, you know, I've I've seen I've seen photographers who didn't do a good job on on pictures mm -hmm. get flamed by the people who yeah. who had the pictures taken, you know. Um, and it's I just I just don't want that. I, uh, that's too much pressure. I think you feel bad. I wouldn't want bad, yeah. right. I wouldn't want to be a part of someone saying, "Oh, and it all started because Carlos <laughs> ruined my <laughs> Carlos ruined my pictures, and now we're getting a divorce." <laughs> we got uh, one good. We had one good picture, <laughs> and, and he got he got uh, half of me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah, that's it's, it's 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 ridiculous. So let's let's get back to kind of mentoring, but this time let's talk about like your business mentoring and and joining a group. Um, because I saw you getting interviewed on a radio station. What was that all about? Yeah, so this uh the group that I told you I'm a part of on Facebook, uh, the group is called the Conversation, and it's a group of it got started. Uh, by one of my friends who is uh, a local business owner and he was trying to it, it didn't really his intent wasn't really to have it start off like that to have it get to the point that it is right now he just wanted to get uh, some guys together who were locals local business owners and aspiring business owners uh, just basically getting the guys together to fellowship and you know keep each other accountable and you know, just things like that. That's That was his initial intent. So we get together for the first meeting, and it was 14 of us. And out of that first meeting, just all types of ideas just started coming out of that from all, all of the different creative minds that were there. You know, creative minds, just guys that just wanted to do things together, uh, guys that just had the, the bug for being successful, uh, different things like that. So out of that came this group, The Conversation, uh, now, which is over 200 members in just a, bit, a little bit less than two months. Um, and we've been doing things uh, in the community, uh, helping local business owners grow their business. Uh, and we're link, linked up with the local college uh, where we have uh, Fayetteville State University, where we have a weekly radio station, uh, uh, online radio station, radio show, where we uh, interview different business owners that would that are within the group. Uh, so that when you saw me on, I was like probably the third person third person that went on the show uh, just talking about what I do, um, what I do within my business, what I do uh, within the group, uh, some of the things that are on the horizon. And one of the things that I talked about was uh, the mentoring programs that I'm a part of and, and then how the group is getting into some of the, the things too. The group is being involved in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Very neat. Uh yeah, I've been uh I've been contemplating joining a, a local business group and then there's like a meetup as well that I was that I that I went to last week, last Wednesday. 
Um, and it's exactly that, a bunch of small business yeah. owners who basically feed each other work. Yeah. Um, and it's really cool. It, it really helps, uh, especially if, you're, if you've moved into a new area and you just ah. don't really know anyone. Mm. It comes in handy. Yeah. Makes that, helps you build that network web. Yeah. yeah, definitely, and and that's one of the things. The major thing about this group is about networking. Uh, so it's definitely a, a, a awesome opportunity to meet other business owners and some who are not business owners. Just give them an, the opportunity to see what their passion is and some of the things that they want to get involved in. Nice. So then, <clears throat> kind of the 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 natural progression of photography goes from photography. And then you flip the switch over to video. Mm, Have you ever thought of true. shooting videos and making movies and stuff like that? I, at, and way back, I, I really believe that it was, uh, I can't even, it probably was about 10 to 15 years ago. I remember messing with this. Maybe it wasn't that long ago. Maybe it was a little bit less than that. But there was this, uh, this uh, program that I remember downloading on my computer. I, I can't remember. It was called movie something uh, I, I can't even remember but I remember playing with it where I would take little clips and put into it and add music to it and things like that and I mean it was fun for that period of time that I did it but I, I never really took it any further than that uh, so I, I don't know I, I, that's why I really believe my my niche my passion is for the still photography I, I don't know if I would ever go uh, outside of that yeah one of my one of my buddies in Chicago. Uh, he's he's actually more of a designer, but he got into photography. Yeah. And then that photography turned into uh, moving photography, uh, video. Videography. Yeah. Videography. Um, and now he's actually directing a uh, a uh, a documentary. Wow. The, yeah. So he's he's directing uh, midway documentary, the story of Chicago hip hop. Oh, okay. And he comes to mind because uh, he and he and uh, the team was uh, w they were written about on this article and what it is uh, Chicago citizen. Newspaper wrote a wrote an article about them and everything, and it's interesting to see the transition where he went from designing to photography. Now he's actually shooting video, directing, and editing this whole big project. And I'm always interested in seeing if a photographer. I mean, you have the eye for the proper angle and things like that. All you have to do is flip that switch and <laughs> and mm -hmm. hit record. All of a sudden, you're going to be recording someone's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's talk about uh, a movie director uh, who's speaking made a of moving videos. Speaking of moving videos, uh, this movie director made a made a movie about Chicago. Uh, the director's uh, Spike, Spike Lee. Uh, and and uh, and the movie is called Chirac. Mm -hmm. uh, so the history of Chirac is m m more people have died in the streets of Chicago than in Iraq. Therefore, the cute people who probably came up with names like Benefer went ahead and started using the name Chirac. And now Spike went on and made this movie, and I want to read. I want to read kind of like the quick synopsis of it, and I hope this thing doesn't start playing goofy videos. But it's uh, the trailer shows a sharply dressed Samuel Jackson welcoming viewers to the story of a woman named. I'm not even going to go there. Do it. Who, you got to say it. Lysistrata. Yeah, sound it out. <laughs> Lysis, Lysis Strata. Uh, where are we at? 
so bad. Yeah, I know. Keep going. Uh, who leads a sex strike in Chicago to rally against gun violence in the black community. The film is a modern take on a Greek comedy of the same name. Uh, which, uh, let's put a sticky note there. Okay, the movie back stars yeah. the, the movie stars Nick Cannon, Wesley Snipes, Angela Bassett, Dave Chappelle, Jennifer Hudson, and more. The lead role is played by Mad Men actress Tiana Paris. Okay. Uh, oh, man, this is exhausting. Charlie, do we unleash you, or do we ask the other guys who might have a shorter <laughs> on this? So... I can wait. Hang on real quick. Hang on real quick. Yeah, Before yeah. you get going, Keith, did you see the trailer yet? I haven't seen it yet. No, I no. haven't. Ooh, we should okay. let him watch it for a couple of seconds. <sighs> we'll, we'll, we'll add. We'll, yeah. Jack, have you seen it? Yes. Uh, sh do you want to go or do you want to let Charlie go? No, he, no, Jack can go first. It's cool. I'm just going to okay. piggyback. I'm good. Because I know, I know. I mean, uh, uh, I know Charlie's gonna be on this like a pit bull on a pork chop. That's why. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to give Spike a chance, and uh, I'd like to think that there's some more depth to the film as a whole. But that said, I think he would be, if that's true, he would be smart enough to make a trailer that reflects that. Uh, yeah, it's pretty offensive, and I have nothing to be offended about in that <laughs> trailer. <laughs> but it's pretty offensive to me. Love it, Jack. Uh, it's it's just perpetrating so many obnoxious stereotypes, and it's like, and not even that, just on like a filmmaking artistic level, it's so derivative and trite and pastiche, and he's just like ripping. I mean, it's like a it's like a sad like Tarantino, like. I I just don't know what he's doing with it. I don't know what the purpose of it is. I don't know. I just don't know where it's going, and and the stuff he's it, if he's trying to make a commentary about the state of the socioeconomics in Chicago, I think he's doing it more harm than he is good, at least from this trailer. So, like I said, I'd like to give it a chance, and maybe the final film itself will will redeem itself. But I'm not thinking it will, because the stuff he's doing is pretty, pretty low. I, I mean, I don't want to go into details. I don't want everyone to see it for themselves. But and I'm sure Charlie will go off on it. So, ah, yeah. So, go. so. Oh, where do I start? Yo, I was I was excited to watch this this morning, and I um, I was on the train <laughs> heading into the city. And I actually got shushed in the quiet car. Because <laughs> I yelled out. I was like, like a quiet car. Yeah, yeah. There's quiet cars in the metro. It's weird, you know. So yeah. like and um I was like, this dude and 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 then like <laughs> I was so upset. Now, I'm not I didn't grow up in Chicago. I grew up in Indiana, next door neighbor, right? But I've been in Chicago for like less like fifteen years. So just shy of the same amount of time growing up in Indiana, in Indiana, by like three years or so. So like, I saw this, and a lot of the, a lot of the different uh, people in 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 Chicago were kind of skeptical, but a lot of the leaders were kind of, uh, kind of against it, and a lot of the aldermen were trying to block, you know. Um, Spike Lee from, from shooting in, in, their, in their neighborhoods and stuff like that. I mean, if you don't know, Chicago has aldermen that are kind of like over that section of the city for those neighborhoods. And I was like, okay, cool. It could be good because he brought a lot of kids in for the movie. He brought a lot of kids off the street. So he did a lot of good, right, while he was shooting. And I had a... And I, I have another uh, another another friend that... that uh, uh, that I, that I used to work, used to teach with, and she she knew a lot of the producers and stuff like that when they were here on it too. So I was like, okay, maybe Spike is gonna be okay. Maybe he's going to do it in the way of like school days, right? Meets like do the right thing and harken back to his old school way of shooting, right? You know, throwing the guy on 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 the 
on the cart and then shooting him, you know, like like he did Denzel so many times in different movies and stuff. And maybe it's going to be good. Maybe it's going to be okay. It may be satirical, you know. It may be serious comedy, right? It, you know, to prove a point, right? But like the trailer was like all over the place, and it like Samuel Jackson might may as well have been. May as well stepped out of like something in the 1970s, like Shaft, <laughs> you know, you know era. Like I've never, I, I don't know the last time I've seen a black man in a in a in an all orange suit. No, <laughs> no. At first, it, let me let me step in there because at at first when I saw him, I got pissed. Yeah, like I knew where and he I was. Like why. I was waiting for him. I was, and I remember doing making a Facebook post where he came out, and I was waiting for him to say, "Welcome to the fuck shop," <laughs> you know. And then he's wearing this suit, and at first I was pissed because I'm like, "Okay, where are we going with this?" But then I remembered, like, if you, if you, there's this dance step in Chicago called yeah, back Chicago in Chicago yeah. Steppen. Yeah, it's. And if you go step in, people are dressed in really nice suits that are bright colors. Yeah, yeah. They, they have, still yeah. do that. So with that one, I let go just a little bit because I remember going step in. No, I was gonna say let's not go. Let's not go back home or whatever. Yeah, I used, yeah, I remember that. But I just it. I don't no, know. No, it's then weird. after I after I forgave him for that, I thought to myself. All Samuel things. Jackson, you were in Star Wars. Now you're doing <laughs> Capital One commercials. Are you just doing everything just for a paycheck? Are you like Ben Afflecking right now? <laughs> like you're doing everything that shows up at your desk. Like you are better than this. I'm pretty sure it's with the cloud of Spike Lee, right? Like I said, if it was in the range of like school days, right? This is, that seems like right. that's the closest. Maybe do the right thing. Maybe. Um, not necessarily she's got to have it, but like I'm thinking, okay, cool. Spike Lee has done these like different things where it's had a little bit of comedy, but it's for a certain reason, right? And so maybe he's still doing that. And it seems like it's very shot like a Spike Lee thing. Because I even think that like you know Quentin Tarantino and all those guys back in the day, they kind of took a lot of what Spike Lee did in all, a lot of those yeah. early movies, you know, from that, right? So, but when it doesn't, it just doesn't seem good. And then, like. I'm good with all the cameos. I'm good with. I'm. I'm okay with you know Samuel Jackson being it. I'm okay with, you know, you know uh, what's the singer name? Um, uh, Jennifer, Hudson. Jennifer Hudson. Like people that are like are, are close to Chicago. Even even Dave Chappelle. I'm I'm fine. But <laughs> I didn't even like Dave Chappelle's like. I didn't even like his his line in it. You know, <laughs> and, and the whole like, the whole woman strike and stuff like that. And they turn into a a gang and it's like. It's, right. it's it's all over, and then I see Nick Cannon, and I just lose it. I'm sorry, even, just lose don't it. Don't even get me started when I see Nick on that Cannon, little, that little tattooed out, like like he's like he's the game or something. Like I lose it. Like <laughs> you could have put any upcoming black actor in that role, like young kid that's like that you know, that like so you can forget about it, right? You you understand that that's you could even you could have even grabbed like. It'd have been cool to see if he they would have tried to find the best up and coming actor from Chicago that's young that would fit that role, that millennial that would fit that role. But having Nick Cannon as one of the main gangbangers, in your, which is which then I try to give him the benefit of the doubt. Is he going for some weird serious comedy? And he put Nick Cannon there for a reason. But then mm-hmm. I'm listening to the trailer, and it's Nick Cannon's song in the trailer too about Chirac, you know. And yeah. I don't, and I didn't think Nick Cannon's from. He's not from Chicago. He's from New York, I thought, right? I, thought he's, so I, I don't know where he, I don't know where he's from originally, but like. He's from it's there just, now. It's just, it's just, it's just <laughs> weird. It's just, it's just really, really weird. And for and me, maybe, maybe it's a bad edit. Maybe it's a bad a, edit. But whatever. there was, there was moments in there where, and I, and I went in touchy. I'm not gonna lie. I love Chicago, dude. I defend that. I defend Chicago forever. Uh, so I go into something named Chirac, a little bit touchy. Granted, now. But I was giving it the benefit of the doubt because when there's there's bits and pieces in there where like all the all the 
all the ladies are sitting on the couch and they go, damn! Like, I got the feeling like, okay, maybe it was a joke. Maybe they're going for like a, a little bit of a Friday. Hyper real type, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. like just, I was hoping that it was that. But if that's what you're doing, are you actually trying to make fun or make light of a really serious situation? Like, it's... It's 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 yeah. a real it's a the reality yeah, la, la. is people are dying at record pace, <laughs> yeah. and you're making fun of it. One of the one of the girls is not even like I don't even consider her a real actor. It's like Carmelo Anthony's wife, Lala. <laughs> <laughs> like she's one of the chicks <laughs> with with a Chicago accent. I just don't. Another New York person. Another new person that lives in New York. Like I feel like man, Chicago's always going to be a second city, huh? I mean, you know, he gives. I put on my Facebook post. He gives. He gives New York do the right thing. <laughs> then he comes to Chicago to make a movie, <laughs> and it's Chirac. It like makes a hot mess. <laughs> you know, like do right thing is like a feel good movie for that city, right? That that I remember like last summer they had a block party because they named they officially named the street where he shot that. Uh, they actually gave the name. They changed the name of the street to the name it was and do the right and do the right thing. Had a big block party with Dave Chappelle and all these other people last year. Like that movie transcends so much for that city. That like I feel like when you put a movie just like Rocky does for you know where Rocky was was filmed and stuff like that. Just what you know Philadelphia is to like boxing and stuff like that. Like you would think that like Chicago needs to be the same type of deal, right? Like, and if there's supposed to be something to help Chicago, then I would think it'd be a little more serious. I was and thinking it's going to be more Boys in the Hood type of deal than rather than, like, that the shine light on what was happening in the 90s and, right. and, you know, than what it is. Did you, could you imagine, right. you know, Spike, not Spike, but can you imagine Ice Cube making Friday, you know, instead of Boys in the Hood first, you know, and, like, saying, this is to shine light on... It's like saying Friday is to shine light on the on the troubles of South Central L.A., you know? Like, doesn't really make sense why you would do it that way, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't get it. And this is from a guy who, like you said, if you want to do something that's a little bit on the light side, but yet a heavy topic, do the right thing was exactly that. School days, he did the same thing. Like school it, days was that exactly that? And he, didn't he? Didn't he do? He did the one where it was like the the light skinned girls against the dark skinned girls. Hair was school it called? Days. School what days. was it? School days. Yeah, school, school days? days. Yeah, school days. Um, and then and then like uh, more serious movies like Malcolm X. Like one Forty of my Acres in a Mill was awesome. Like like yeah, this one is of a... my favorite movies was Malcolm X. Like yeah, it, so it made me want to. <laughs> Want to study more about Malcolm X and and see where he's coming from mm-hmm. and where that mentality comes from and uh and and now this I even liked his other <laughs> Kickstarter one what was it old old boy or whatever I even liked that one which some people didn't like that one yeah. I even th- thought that one was good yeah like, I don't maybe it's just bad editing could it be bad editing Jack could it could it could it be I mean it's it just too much too quick and... yeah I mean. Or is he taking advantage of a situation and trying to make a quick buck? But does he need it at this point? Uh, uh, yeah. His he, career has struggled a little bit lately. Yeah. I mean, he seemed like he seemed like he had no problems with it. People were giving him crap. He had no problems with that. His Kickstarter what was that last year that he did Old Boy or two years ago with Kickstarter. He got that funded, and that was only because a student. He said a student told him that he was working at the. Was it New York, New York Film School or whatever? And they were told him about Kickstarter. And he was like, "What?" And then instantly he, made, he used Kickstarter as a, as a way to make another movie. I was, I thought maybe you shouldn't have explained it that way. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I remember thinking that no one ever like no one got what I was saying when I when I, when, I, when he, the Kickstarter came out and it was in the Kickstarter video. And he's like, "You learned about this from your student," and you're like, "Oh, sweet! I don't have to go through the normal red tape." Maybe I should do a Kickstarter. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't. And that's, didn't I mean, even that's want to get money. Yeah. That's an interesting thing too, because everyone thinks of Kickstarter like as fund my comic book, fund my game, 
That's one of the first, well, no, I guess not one of the first ones that I've ever heard of because I've actually, I actually have some friends in LA that have gotten their movies funded through Kickstarter, but someone like Spike Lee, don't you think he'd be able to pitch an idea to a studio? And then I think, I think he like could. Him? I think, yeah, I think it's a way to get around all that and be more creative. Like, I don't know, like, that's that big thing that, like, and maybe we could talk about this too, a uh, uh, past guest that we had on the show, um, Anthony Piper always talks about that and all his other uh, colleagues that are doing really good in the 2D realm, right? Like we were t talking about uh, uh, LaShawn, LaShawn's uh, new uh, uh, anime flick, you know, that he has of, that he has out and the, everything. My mind's drawing a blank right now. But people were talking on Anthony's Facebook page this week about uh, one guy. There's always a couple that are like wondering if somebody gets so big, you know, why use Kickstarters? Can't you just do it yourself? And I think a little bit, you know, like like what you were saying, Carlos, but um, it might be a little naive of us to think that maybe it's that easy cause after they get that get that success. And maybe they do need Kickstarter, but then it's, but then, then sometimes I'm like, well, I don't know, you know. Would Spike Lee have that much trouble? Or maybe through all his years of doing things, maybe it is harder based on his relationships. But see, or this is this is you know? this is the trick to all that, and and this kind of will blend into, you know, Keith starting his company and and people starting companies. The the main thing that you want to keep in mind when you're trying to make money is use other people's money when you're trying to make money. Wow. Yeah. So Spike doesn't want to make movies. He doesn't. Well, he wants to make movies. He doesn't, he doesn't want to pay to make movies. That's why he goes to studios. That's why he goes he to Kickstarter. someone to pay him to make movies. Yeah. So always remember that when you're trying to make money, when you're working on a project that you hope is going to make a lot of money, don't use your own money. Right. Get use use enough of your own money to have a product that you can go out and shop to other people with more money than you. So that way. If it loses money, hell, you lost their money, and <laughs> you're still you know, right. You yeah. know, that's the smart business people do that. You you work enough to where you have enough leverage to go and get the capital you need to finish it, and that's probably. I don't know. I don't know what 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 studio gave him the green light for Chirac, but could you I think, imagine? I think, I think Amazon has something to do with it. Yeah. Amazon, that's Amazon, what it was. Well, Amazon's really his first yeah. movie, movie uh, motion picture project. Yeah, right. this is their first one. He picked uh, a doozy, didn't they? Good, good choice, Ooh. Amazon. Good job. But, um, <laughs> I'm wondering uh, how this could is Could you imagine go. if he would have brought Chirac to Kickstarter? Like, people in Chicago are literally pissed right now. Yeah. They're yeah. very upset with this kid because he's coming out with this movie. It's, it's very mixed. I don't, I don't think they, he really has... I know this is... Uh, again, this is our opinion, but I don't think he has the neighborhoods as behind him as before. I don't know. People tend, but tend that's to just not it. like... No one, no yeah. one really knew what the movie was about. He's yeah. in Chicago shooting it, but no one knew what the hell it was about. So if you told the neighborhood and the aldermen and all the politicians in Chicago, okay, so we're, we're going to, this is the movie, right? There's a bunch of people, they're shooting each other up, but then the female part of the, of the movie, they're going to join, they're going to create their own gang and they're going to put these guys on punishment until they put the guns down. And a bunch of side stories. <laughs> it's weird. At, at what point did Amazon say yes? Yes. I bet you didn't even tell. That's I bet you the, stuff is so that's new. That's gonna be our first movie. Think they about said it. yes at Spike Lee. They said yes at Spike Lee, and yeah. then they probably it was yeah. hands off, which yeah. is gonna be a learning experience for Amazon, right? Maybe that's how. Be I mean, it could turn out to be great, but I don't great. know. It could be great, or it could be so controversial that it's great, right? Because everybody's going to want to go see I mean, it wouldn't be his get, first that does that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to watch the bootleg. <laughs> 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 so we'll, we'll have to see. I put on my post that I'm not convinced, and it's just weird. But my only bigger, biggest qualm, because it seems like he did his due diligence of getting uh, pretty good uh, black actors that will have a draw, like Samuel and, and, you know, and Dave Chappelle and... But 
the sentiment, which was a funny video posted on my thing about this other guy, this other young teen from Chicago that basically cusses, <laughs> cusses him out. It just goes <laughs> off. He goes <laughs> on and talks about his glasses and everything else. And, and I think they really don't like the Nick Cannon pick. I think that's the biggest thing, you know. Oh. That's the biggest not, thing, mm. you know, I think people will give Nick Cannon the benefit of doubt when it's coming to comedy, um, even his songs to a point because he, he just figure who he is. And drumline, he was drumline really good on drumline. People like him, right? but the, but but then again, when you put him in something where outside of him, outside of who he really is, because we know he's not that thug type of person, or he even come from that from that background, very very Disney esque back down. Right. If if it, if he was from a bad, ba- battered part of town, badder, uh, worst part of town. Um, we would know it, and you've kind of made your career on like being very clean and 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 a cookie cutter at this point, which I I don't think really is a bad thing, you know. But not if you're laying up. on a pile of money, it's not. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's forced. And yeah, and, and you you dated and had kids with Mariah Carey. He's been doing. He's yeah. doing pretty good. <laughs> you win. You win. Speaking of having kids with Mariah Carey, hey Keith. <laughs> <laughs> New rumor. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up because I see you dozing off a little bit, and I know it's like already like uh, Friday morning. Yeah, it's oh, actually where you it's are. Actually <laughs> is it Friday morning? Did you just skip Thursday? I know. You skip all of Thursday. <laughs> it's that daylight savings time. It's a it's a killer. Keith's in Australia. So Keith, <laughs> yeah. So Keith, if people are looking for your work out there in the internet, where can they find more information on you? Yeah. So on uh, Facebook, my page is uh, Keith's Creative Images, um, and uh, I'm actually in the process of putting my website together right now with the same name, uh, Keith's Creative Images dot com. So that Ooh. should be up uh, sometime soon. Um, same thing on uh, Instagram. It's uh, at Keats Creative Images. Um, so everything is pretty much along the same vein. Um, so uh, I probably will be. Uh, um, I'm actually looking forward to when we work together. So when I get that thing done and put it up on my pages and use it on. Uh, some of the shirts that I'm going to be doing, with, and and my my intent is to create like a a brand, to where whenever you see me doing something, even the mentoring things, uh, uh, things in the community, when I uh, use my photography in different aspects within the community, to always see my logo or something that references my name itself, you know. So definitely, I'm looking forward to when I can use that. For it also, yeah. And in the yeah, meantime, sure. if somebody's uh trying to get a hold of you in terms of that, in terms of doing any type of photography, headshots and stuff like that, easy enough is just to post on your Facebook page or yeah, uh, contact that way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Creative Images is my Facebook page, and that's Creative with a K. Create with a K, yes. Creative. Keith, with a K. Uh, Keith's and, and, Creative with a K Images. Yeah, Keith's Creative Images with a K. Excellent. Thank you for uh, filling in. It was very short notice. We had someone else booked, and uh, and uh, we had to reschedule. And you saved the day, my friend. Oh, oh, he's got my back, this one. Oh, he's got my back. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all. It was, it was nice uh, linking up with you again, man. It was nice linking up with you. Oh, definitely, man. It's uh, Yeah, hang on for a bit. We'll, we'll talk after this. Yeah, nice meeting you too, guys, uh, Jack and Charlie. Yeah, yeah, it was a pleasure. Yeah. And Charlie B. Williams, if people are looking for you online, where can they find you? Oh, me? Okay, cool. Uh, if you're looking for me... I'm going to hit you with the Spike Lee. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for me, uh, you can f- go to my website, which is cargocollective.com slash Charlie B. Williams. There's all my uh, portfolio of my recent latest and greatest work. And you can find me on Twitter at CBW3. Facebook, you can find me at CharlieBW3. Uh, Facebook.com slash CharlieBW3 and then that awesome amazing Twitter, pe- not Twitter, what is it? Pinterest mm-hmm. page, yeah, you got it. Oh, Pinterest oh, page, oh, which oh. is CharlieBW3. Pinterest, all your needs. A little bit a little bit for everybody. Keith, you can Why don't you make like a tree 
and get out of here. <laughs> and Jack Casper, uh, Zach, if people are trying to find you, where can they find you? I am, as always, on sketchbookjack.com and sketchbookjack on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> And I, am, <laughs> and I am Carlos Gomez. You can find me at carlosrgomez.com. You can also find me, Coconut Justice, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and, believe it or not, Pinterest. Yeah. <laughs> if you're hanging on on, uh, on Twitter, you can find the Sketch Zone podcast at Sketch Zone. You can also go to sketch.zone. And while you're there, you can vote on people's artwork. Or if you have some artwork, you could submit your own artwork Post too. And if you win, you get to come hang out with us. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can go to facebook.com slash the sketch zone. You can go to youtube.com slash sketch zone podcast. And you can also find us on Stitcher, SoundCloud, and iTunes. And while you're out there, subscribe. Tell your friends about us. Subscribe. <laughs> Give us those five stars. You know, do that. And then that basically helps people find us and and uh, know what this is all about. So uh, that's it for us for this week. Thank you, everyone, for listening and participating. And thanks again, Keith, for filling in and coming to share your story. And, and more importantly, thank you for mentoring these kids because these kids need more people like you. Yeah, more people absolutely. Thank you. Guidance. Uh, just give them hope. It feels like it feels like we're losing hope. Uh, and if movies like Chirac is just not making things any better. <laughs> but if you're an artist, get involved. See if you if you uh, if you have some free time. And those professional artists, we always never have free time. But if you have some free time, check out any of your local art centers or or anything, local groups and stuff like that. You know, give some give some time. It's it's really rewarding. It's pretty fun. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, son. With that said, we're gonna go ahead and pull the plug on this one. Pull Say good night. Good night. Good night. Have a good week, everyone. <laughs>